Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Carly Bird. This is week nine. We made it to week nine, didn't we, Carly? We did. And now we are on the, if I'm not mistaken, I don't have my phone here. It is the 18th of September, correct? Yes. We are recording this a little bit early and we do apologize for this. Um, we've had a busy September. We've had three weddings, the last one being our own. Right, Carl? Well, it's coming up here in two weeks as in two of weeks. yesterday. Yeah. So we're having to do these episodes a little bit ahead of schedule. Uh, this episode will be airing um, <laughs> in about five days, I believe, six mm-hmm. days, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, the same thing with the next episode. But again, right. we do apologize for the, for the to, for being so inconsiderate. Apologize for that. Otherwise, I know. I'm sorry. I'm so excited about the wedding. It's been crazy like what we can't even are you ready describe it it's like watch any movie about a wedding and then times that by like a hundred and then you'll like maybe understand. and then you know yep from. then you know yeah. what it's like but um now that we got our personal life out of the way carly how many days until halloween 43 43 we are almost the magical 30 and again we have a big announcement that's going to be happening here um we're going to keep teasing it. We're going to keep teasing it. We got two more episodes. I'll be teasing this beautiful mystery. Okay. And then it'll be revealed to everyone. But it'll everyone's going to be excited about it. It's going to be big for our community to see uh, where this channel goes and everything. Um, now, tonight, we are drinking Jack's Oh, my gosh. I love cider this. Rosé. Rosé. It is the rosé one. It's right so good. Here. Premium edition, handcrafted. It's delicious. It's a cute little pink can. And it just, just screams, hey. Drink me. It's delicious. It's honestly probably my most favorite thing that yeah. we've drank this entire- Literally, yeah. Like in all the episodes. Their this thing should be favorite. drink me. It should this be drink me. Yep. Um, we went back with them because I didn't know they had different brands. And like Carly and I talked about this, like we could go back to the same they have brand. so many different yeah. flavors. If, if, if a brand, if you're out there and you would like to, I don't know, throw money our way or whatever- it doesn't have to just be like if you have multiple things, we can do that over multiple episodes. Oh multiple my gosh! Yeah. yeah, absolutely. We're in the same episode, um, who cares? So you know how we yeah, like our booze. Going back with the cider, I like the cider in the fall. We're getting to the most important time of the year, Halloween, and apple like cider with Halloween, oh my gosh. peanut butter and jelly. I'm just so down for ciders right right now. Like it's literally my favorite beverage. Mm-hmm. Like like a, a problem. basic bitch with a Starbucks and some Uggs. Yes, it just it's makes me sense. with ciders and pumpkins. God damn just right. Throw them at me. Yeah. Okay. So with that said, Carly, you're presenting tonight. What is the story? The story is called Jeff the Killer. Oh, okay. So oh, the this killer. story is interesting because the first time I read it, I was like, wait a minute. Is there a possession going on? Is this some kind of psychopath? Is this a serial killer? Is this an alien robot? Like, what is going on? And you won't know until the very end. So, strap your boots. Get ready. This is the tale of Jeff the Killer. After weeks of unexplained murders... The ominous unknown killer is still on the rise. After after little evidence has been found, a young boy states that he survived one of the killer's attacks and bravely tells his story. I had a bad dream and I woke up in the middle of the night, says the boy. I saw that for some reason the window was open, even though I remember it being closed before I went to sleep. I got up and shut it once more. Afterwards, I simply closed. Afterwards, I I simply crawled under my covers and and tried to get back to sleep. That's when I had a strange feeling, like someone was watching me. Hey, hey, (laughs) Hey now, hey now, slow down. I looked up and nearly jumped out of my bed. There, in the little ray of light illuminating from between my curtains, were a pair of two eyes. These weren't regular eyes. They were dark, ominous eyes. They were bordered in black and just terrified me. That's when I saw his mouth, a long, horrendous smile that made every hair on my body stand up. The figure stood there watching me. Finally, after what seemed like forever, he said a simple phrase, but in a way, it 
sounded like only a madman could speak. He said, Go to sleep. I let out a scream. That's what sent him at me. He pulled up a knife, aiming at my heart. He jumped on top of my bed. I fought him back. I kicked. I punched. I roll around, trying to knock him off of me. That's when my dad busted in. The man threw the knife. It went into my dad's shoulder. The man probably would have finished him off if one of the neighbors hadn't alerted the police. They drove into the parking lot and ran towards the door. The man turned and ran down the hallway. I heard a smash, like glass breaking. As I came out of my room, I saw the window that was pointing towards the back of my house. It was broken. I looked out to see him vanish into the distance. I can tell you one thing. I will never forget that face. Those cold eyes. That psychotic smile. So when they say they never forget the face, that is like permanent psychological damage is what they're meaning. That that thing's like, hey, guess yes. what? I need medication the rest of my life. Yes. <laughs> Or a very, very good therapist. I will never forget those evil eyes. That psychotic smile. They will never leave my head. Police are still on the look for this man. If you see anyone that fits the description in this story, please contact your local police department. Jeff and his family had moved into a new neighborhood. Jeff's dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. His brother, Seth, couldn't complain, though. A new, better house? What's not to love? As they were getting unpacked, one of their neighbors came by. Hello, she said. I'm Barbara. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and my son. She turns around and calls her son over. Billy, these are our new neighbors. Billy said hi and ran back to play in his yard. Well, said Jeff's mom, I'm Margaret, and this is my husband Peter and my two sons Jeff and Seth. They each introduced themselves and, the bar and then Barbara introduced them to her son's birthday party. She said, would you want to come? It's in a couple weeks. So Jeff and his brother were about to object when their mother said that she would love to. When Jeff and his family were done packing, Jeff went up to his room. Mom, why would you invite us to some kid's party? If you haven't noticed, I'm not some dumb kid. Jeff, said his mother, we just moved here. We should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors. Now we're going to that party, and that's final. Jeff started to talk, but stopped himself, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Whenever his mother said something, it was final. He walked up to his room and plopped down on his bed. He sat there looking at his ceiling, when suddenly he got a weird feeling. Not so much pain, but just strange. He dismissed it as some random feeling. He heard his mother call him down to finish unpacking his stuff, and he walked downstairs to get it. The next day, Jeff walked downstairs to get breakfast and got ready for school. Ooh, here's where shit gets real. Oh, boy. <laughs> as he sat there eating his breakfast, he, once, he got that feeling once again. This time, it was stronger. It gave him a slight tugging pain, but he dismissed it. As he and Seth finished breakfast, they walked down to the bus stop. They sat there waiting for the bus, and then all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped over them, only inches above their laps. They both jumped back in surprise. Hey, what the hell? Were they on the bus? No, they're sitting down okay. like on a bench. Okay, okay. So, minding their own business, this guy's being a dick. Got it. Cool. Yeah. The kid landed and turned back to them. He kicked his skateboard up and caught it with his hands. The kid seems to be about 12, one year younger than Jeff. He wears an Aeropostale t-shirt and ripped blue jeans. Well, well, well. It looks like we got some new meat. Suddenly, two other kids appeared. 
One was super skinny and the other was huge. Well, since you're new here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over here is Keith. Jeff and Seth looked over to the skinny kid. He had a dopey face that you would expect a sidekick to have. Ha! <laughs> and he's Troy. They looked over at the fat kid. Talk about tub of lard. This kid looked like he hadn't exercised since he was crawling. It's like, hey, big, 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 big. <clears throat> that's, that's a kid he's thing. To say. That's such a kid thing to say. And I, said the first kid, am Randy. Now, for I all- I like the head bob you did. Like, what is he? Like, I don't know because Randy is like, such a weird name. Like, hello. I'm sorry. My name is Randy. I am part of this group. For anyone named Randy, <laughs> I just feel like you do this. Anyway. Like, I feel like I have to head bob when I need to make a point. I don't know. I His name vertigo. should be How like Shane or like Kyle or hey, um, like Brad. Find some more generic white names to say. That'd be good. I'm doing my best randy <laughs> is more like hick I don't, Continue. I don't know it's like your problem with derek i have the same problem with randy anyway never now for all disown the derek derek be with you continue wow that was something now for all the kids in the neighborhood there's a small price for bus fare if you catch my drift Seth stood up. Buster, what the fuck? Is this Detroit? <laughs> These kids are acting like they're in the, from the ghetto or something like that. They are from the ghetto, I think. I don't know. Did the ghetto kids meet up with the super rich kids at the same spot for their bus stop? Anyway, that Seth no. stood up, ready to punch the lights out of the kids' eyes, when one of his friends pulled a knife on him. <gasps> a knife. Shit. It just got real. Uh uh uh. I had hoped that you would be more co cooperative, but it seems we must do this the hard way. The kid walked up to Seth and took his wallet right out of his pocket. What the fuck? Jeff got that feeling again. Now it was truly strong, a burning sensation. He stood up. I'm really feeling like this sensation is not good because I feel like it's an erect penis. Continue. I, you know, I got that drift like the first time it said it, especially when it was like, I laid down on my bed and got us to, it's like, whoa, slow down, boys. <laughs> Woo! Slow down. We know we're like middle school, but come on. We don't need to talk about this right now. Anyway. <sighs> slow down. That's the thing. It's like, slow down. That is our first t-shirt, by the way. It's like, whoa. It's going to say, dot, whoa, dot, dot, slow, slow down. down. Continue. He stood up, but Seth gestured him to sit down. Jeff ignored him and walked up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give back my bro's wallet or else. Randy put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out his own knife. Oh, and what will you do about it? Wait, wait, who had the knife? Well, I'm confused. So far, Randy and some other kid. So the, 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 the bad kids. The bad kids both have a knife. Yes. That's what it, yes. Continue. Okay. So, so far, we've got two knives out. Got it. So, Randy and his sidekick. Got it. Right. Um, oh, and what will you do? Just as he finished the sentence, Jeff popped the kid in the nose. As Randy reached for his face, Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke it. Holy shit. Okay. How did he do that? Randy screamed, and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed Jeff, but Jeff was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground. Keith lashed out at him, but Jeff ducked and stabbed him in the arm. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground screaming. Troy rushed him too, but Jeff didn't even need the knife. He just punched Troy straight in the stomach and he went down. As he fell, he puked all over the place. Seth could do nothing but look in amazement at Jeff. Jeff? How do you do that? Was all he could say. They saw the bus coming and knew they'd be blamed for the whole thing. So they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over to Randy and the others. As Jeff and Seth made it to school, they didn't dare tell what happened. All they did was sit and listen to everyone else talking. Seth just thought of that. Just thought like 
His brother was beating up a few kids, but Jeff knew it was more. It was something scary. There was, he has a fucking knife. He shanked two people. Like, hey, listen, when I saw the first drops of blood, I was like, this is not okay. <laughs> like, I don't think that's what it means. It's, it's a deeper meaning than what you're going with, you know. Yes. All right, here it comes. As he got that feeling, he felt how powerful it was. The urge to just hurt someone. He didn't like how it sounded, but he couldn't help feeling happy about it. He felt that strange feeling go away later that day, and it stayed away for the rest of the day while he was at school. Even as he walked home doing the whole thing near the bus stop, due to the whole thing near the bus stop, and how he probably wouldn't be taking the bus anymore. He still felt happy. When he got home, his parents asked him how his day was, and he said in a somewhat ominous voice, It was wonderful. Next morning, he heard a knock at his front door. He walked down to find two police officers at the door. His mother looking back at him with an angry face. Jeff, these officers tell me that you attacked three kids? That it wasn't regular fighting? They said that they were stabbed. Stabbed! Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, showing his mother that it was true. Mom, they were the ones who pulled the knives out on me and Seth. Seth. Really? So, son said one of the cops. We found three kids, two stabbed, one having a bruise on his stomach, and we have witnesses proving that you fled the scene. Now, what does that tell us? Jeff knew it was of no use. He could say that him and Seth had been attacked, but then there was no proof that it was not them who attacked first. They couldn't say that they weren't fleeing because in truth they were. So Jeff couldn't defend himself or Seth. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it since it was he who beat up all the kids. Sir, it, it, it was me. I was the one who beat up the kids. I just love these cops. Like, listen, <laughs> son, there was two horrific stab wounds and one guy's in a broken tummy. Tom Tom, this is important to us. Like, why would you put that detail in there? His tummy is bruised. You beat him up. You go jail now. Yeah, like, the first two is like, listen, we knew you killed two people, and then you gave some son of a bitch a noogie. <laughs> we're right, adding this right. to your thing. Like, not right. because, like, all this other horrible shit, but we're just going to add this part in there. Like, okay, yeah, good. Just, yeah, keep going. Okay. <clears throat> Sir, it... it it was me. I was the one who beat up the kids. Seth tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. The cop looked at his partner, and they both nod. What does that mean? Well, kid, looks like a year in juvie for you. Kiss cops off like that. Okay, right, cool. right. Wait, says Seth. They all look up the stairs to see him holding a knife. The officers pull their guns and Whoa, locked on the Seth. Fuck? It was me. I beat up those little punks. Have the marks to prove it. He lifts up his sleeves to reveal cuts and bruises as if he were in a struggle. Son, put the knife down, said the officer. Why are they pulling the fu Up the staircase, a 12-year-old is like, listen, I did it. Guys, bring in the SWAT team. We need the fucking SWAT team okay, here but because clearly this fucker- Also, like where did Seth's cuts and bruises come from? Ooh, that's good. Yeah, where did they come from, actually? What the heck? This is my second time reading through the story, and I just thought of it now. Where did they come from? Did he know someone was going to come for Jeff? Continue. All right. Son, just put the knife down, said the officer. Seth held up the knife and dropped it to the ground. He put his hands up and walked over to the cops. No, Seth, it was me. I did it. Jeff had tears running down his face. Ah, uh, poor brother. Try to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me anyway. The police led Seth out to the patrol car. 
Seth, tell them it was me. Tell them I was the one who beat up those kids. Jeff's mother put her hands on his shoulders. Jeff, please, you don't have to lie. We know it was Seth. You can't stop him. Jeff watched helplessly as the car speeds off with Seth inside. A few minutes later, <laughs> Jeff's dad pulled into the driveway, seeing Jeff's face and knowing something was wrong. Jeff, what is it? He couldn't answer. His vocal cords were strained from crying. Instead, Jeff's mother walked his father inside to break the bad news to him. As Jeff stayed outside in the driveway and wept. After an hour or so, Jeff walked back into the house, seeing that his parents were both shocked, sad, and disappointed. He couldn't look at them. He couldn't see how they thought of Seth when it was his fault. He just went to sleep trying to get the whole thing off his mind. Two days went by with no word from Seth at JDC. No friends to hang out with. Nothing but sadness and guilt. That is until Saturday when Jeff was awoken by his mother with a happy, sunshiny face. As she opened up the curtains and let flood... <laughs> Hold on, let's start over. Jeff, it's the day, she said, as she opened up the curtains and let light flood into his room. What? What's today? Asked Jeff as he stirs awake. Why, it's Billy's party. He was fully awake now. Mom, you're joking, right? You don't expect me to go to some kid's party after... There was a long pause. Jeff... We both know what happened. I think this party could be the thing that brightens up the past days. Now get dressed. Jeff's mother walked out of the room and downstairs to get herself ready. He fought himself to get up. He picked out a random shirt and pair of jeans and walked downstairs. He saw his mother and father all dressed up. His mother in a dress and his father in a suit. He thought... Why would they ever wear such fancy clothes to a kid's party? Son, is that all you're going to wear? Said Jeff's mom. Advertisements? <laughs> what is that supposed to mean, advertisements? It sounds like a grandma. Coca-Cola on your shirt? How dare you <laughs> wear something so casual? Advertisements? He said, better than wearing too much. His mother pushed down the feeling to yell at him and hit it with a smile. Now, Jeff, we may be overdressed, but this is how you go if you want to make when? an impression. When is this a thing? When is this a thing when that rich you people do this go to, a... to other rich people's Fair birth enough. birthday parties? Jeff grunted and went back up to his room. I don't have fancy clothes, he yelled downstairs. Just pick something out, called his mother. He looked around in his closet for what he would call fancy. He found a pair of black dress pants that he had for special occasions and an undershirt. He couldn't find a shirt to go with it, though. He looked around and found only striped and patterned shirts, nothing of which went with the dress pants. Finally, he found a white hoodie and put it on. You're wearing that? They both said. His mother looked at her watch. Oh, no. Not enough time to change. Let's just go, she said as she herded Jeff and his father out the door. They crossed the street over to Barbara and Billy's house. They knocked on the door, and it appeared that Barbara was dressed just like his parents. Way overdressed. Creepy. As they walked inside, all Jeff could see were adults, no kids. The kids were out in the yard, Jeff. How about you go out and meet them, said Barbara. Jeff walked outside to a yard full of kids. They were running around in weird cowboy costumes and shooting each other with plastic guns. He might as well be standing in a Toys R Us. <laughs> Suddenly, a kid came up to him and handed him a toy gun and a hat. Hey, want to play? He said. Wait, what's the age group? Of, what, what's the separation here with these kids? I'm assuming... Like six years separation, seven years maybe. So you're saying like this, these kids are six or eight, six to eight. These and... kids are like six to eight years old and he's like 12 to 13. 
Okay, because they want to play. It's like, okay, these are like toddlers? Oh, like, yeah. I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. Real young. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, uh, no, kid. I'm way too old for this stuff. The kid looked at him with that weird puppy dog face. Please, <laughs> said the kid. Fine, said Please. Jeff. He put on the hat and started to pretend to shoot at the kids. <laughs> he just he puts his hand on he puts his hand on the kid's shoulder. Bang, bang, bang. Just wanna let you know. <laughs> I stab you first. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll break your fucking wrists. <laughs> shoot at the kids. At first he thought it was totally ridiculous. But he then he started to actually have fun. Goddamn right, because you're playing cap guns. It's awesome. Hell yes. They probably had little darts in them. Yes, yeah, that's fun. so much fun. I'd be all down for that. It might not have been super cool, but it was the first time he had done something that took his mind off Seth. <laughs> Ever since I framed my other brother for murder, Ooh, this is the first time I've been relaxed. So he played with the kids for a while until he heard a noise. A weird rolling noise. Then it hit him. Randy. Troy. And Keith. They all jumped over the fence on their skateboards. Jeff turned... Wait, 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 wait. How do they jump over the fence of their skateboards? This is a short... Wait, wait. So they're holding the skateboards or they literally like jump the fence With on the skateboards? skateboards. So what they're basically mean? holding onto the skateboards the whole time. They've got to be. They probably pick up the skateboards and jump over the fence. That makes way but more that sense than doing clear. some kind of That wasn't shit. clear. I was really like... I just like envisioned three people on skateboards over a fence. Words can be hard. Continue. Listen. Anyway. Um... Jumped over the fence. Jeff dropped the fake gun and ripped off the hat. Randy looked at Jeff with burning hatred. Hello, Jeff, isn't it? He said. We have some unfinished business. Jeff saw his bruised nose. I think we're even. I beat the crap out of you. And you got my brother into JCD or JDC. <laughs> Randy got an angry look in his eyes. Oh no, I don't go for even. I go for winning. Does he bob his head too? He does the whole head bob thing. You gotta add that in. It adds the <laughs> attitude. It adds the attitude. You may have kicked our asses that one day, but not today. As he said that, Randy rushed at Jeff. They both fell to the ground. Randy pushed Jeff in, punched Jeff in the nose, and Jeff grabbed him by the ears and headbutted him. Jesus Christ! This Jeff is a brawler. Pushed Randy off of him, and they both rose to their feet. Kids were screaming, and parents were running out of the house. Troy and Keith both pulled guns out of their pockets. What the fuck? No one interrupts, or guts will fly. They said. Randy pulled a knife on Jeff and stabbed it into his shoulder. Where the fuck is this? Where it's like I don't know. Kids hop a fence. They're supposed with to guns. be in the rich, like part of town, like a rich neighborhood. And the idea that kids hop a fence loaded and packing. Yeah, and be like packing. Bitch, just ain't over this turf war. Get on the ground. All right. Jeff screamed and fell to his knees. Randy started kicking him in the face. After three kicks, Jeff grabs his foot and twists it, causing Randy to fall to the ground. Jeff stood up and walked towards the back door. Troy grabbed him. Need some help? He picks Jeff up by the back of the collar and throws him through the patio door. As Jeff tries to stand, he's kicked down to the ground. Randy repeatedly starts kicking Jeff until he starts to cough up blood. Come on, Jeff, fight me! He picks Jeff up and throws him into the kitchen. Randy sees a bottle of vodka on the counter and smashes the glass over Jeff's head. Fight! He throws Jeff back into the living room. Come on, Jeff, look at me! Jeff glances up, his face riddled with blood. I was the one who got your brother sent to JDC, and now you're just gonna sit here and let him rot for a whole year? This you kid's should a be fucking psycho. This kid's an absolute fucking psycho. <laughs> Jeff starts to get up. Oh, finally, you stand and fight. Jeff is now to his feet, 
blood and vodka on his face. Once again, he gets that strange feeling, the one in which he hasn't felt for a while. That's not good, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, he's up, said Randy. As he runs at Jeff, that's when it happens. Something inside Jeff snaps. His psyche is destroyed. All rational thinking is gone. All he can do is kill. What? That's a tone shift. <laughs> he grabs Randy and pile drives him to the ground. He gets on top of him and punches him straight in the heart. The punch was so hard it causes Randy's heart to stop. As Randy grasps for breath, Jeff hammers down on him, punch after punch. Blood gushes from Randy's body until he takes one final breath. And dies. I just love like this is some kind of Mortal Kombat like Street Fighter brawl. Where the fuck are the parents? Where's mom and dad? Where are the co where's everybody through this whole thing? Kids come over the fence to do Mortal Kombat and everyone's like, listen, give them their space. Take By guns. the way, it's okay, it's they'll Andy's figure it fault. out. Boys will be boys. A Andy's fault. The fact that these kids pushed, like, the point, like, these kids are clearly psychos that came here. They're clearly psychos. But Wait, do then. You mean Randy, when you say Andy? No, you know what I'm talking Yeah, but you get what or I'm saying. Or Seth. About. Who are you talking about? The fucking you said three Andy. bitches, like, that jumped over the fence. Oh, Andy, Keith, and Seth. Are no. Yes, those assholes. Clearly, they're sociopaths. Yeah. And then, like, so. And they brought fucking guns. I know. What the fuck? Where what? is this? What town does... Uh, continue, continue. Okay. All right, anyway. <laughs> Everyone is looking at Jeff now. The parents, the crying kids, even Troy and Keith. Oh, Troy and Keith. Although they easily break from their gaze and point their guns from... They point their guns at Jeff. Jeff sees the guns trained on him and runs for the stairs. As he runs, Troy and Keith let fire... <laughs> What the fuck? They're... Let out fire on him, each shot missing. Jeff runs up the stairs. He hears Troy and Keith follow up behind him. As they let out their final rounds of bullets, Jeff ducks into the bathroom. He grabs the towel rack and rips it off the wall. Troy and Keith race in, knives ready. Okay, how do you rip a towel rack off the wall? First off, I didn't even think that. I thought that these kids are fucking sociopaths. It's not that easy. These kids are Where sociopaths. Where are the parents? Do you agree these kids are sociopaths? Like, not yes. only this whole thing. That they come packing with guns and knives to a kid's party. Remember, this is the same kid that the party was like, would you play with me? Who yes. the fuck breaks These are little teeny party? tiny babies. If you wanted to fuck up Jeff, why would you do it here? Like, why would you do it here? Well, Randy's right, thinking twice because he's dead now. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Troy swings his wife. <laughs> his wife? He wishes his wife out? We're just talking about playing and. <laughs> <laughs> Troy. My wife is wedding. <laughs> oh, fuck it up with my wife. <laughs> Stop. Troy swings his knife at Jeff. <laughs> who my, backs I will away. swing my wife at you. I can visualize that. <laughs> Troy swings his knife at Jeff, who backs away and bangs the towel rack into Troy's face. Troy goes down hard, and now all that's left is Keith. He's more agile, though, than Troy, and ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack. He dropped the knife and grabbed Jeff by the neck. He pushed him into the wall. A thing of bleach fell down on top of him from the top shelf. In the bathroom. There's bleach in the bathroom. On the top okay. shelf? That's interesting. Okay. That's basically without a cap, apparently. Right. It burned... It burnt both of them, and they both started to scream. Jeff wiped his eyes as best he could. He pulled back the towel rack and swung it straight into Keith's head. As he lay there, bleeding to death, he let out an ominous smile. What's so funny? asked Jeff. Keith pulled out a lighter and switched it on. What's funny? he said. 
is that you're covered in bleach and alcohol. Jeff's eyes widen as Keith threw the lighter at him. As soon as the flame made contact with his clothes, the flames ignited the alcohol and the vodka. While the alcohol burned him, the bleach bleached his skin. Jeff let out a terrible scream as he caught on fire. He tried to roll out the fire, but it was no use. The alcohol had made him a walking inferno. Jesus Christ. He ran down the hall and fell down the stairs. Everybody started screaming as they saw Jeff, now a man on fire. Drop to the ground, he nearly died. The last thing Jeff saw was his mother and the other parents trying to extinguish the flame. It's about goddamn time the family was involved in this whole thing. Right? Where'd they this go? They heard gunfire and they're just like, oh, everybody flee. It's a freaking horror. It's like it's like an action movie at this point where this guy's doing a diehard routine with these yep. freaking terrorists. Yep. And apparently the parents are like, wait. Like they just they stand. I mean, they're all standing there agape. We know it's not you, honey. They probably like at the end of this blamed it on his brother. <laughs> it's still Seth's fault. Damn it, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> That's when he passed out. When Jeff woke, he had a cast wrapped around his face. His... He had bandages around his face. Got it. This is a cast. Anyway, he couldn't see anything, but he felt a cast on his shoulder and stitches all over his body. He tried to stand up, but he realized that there was some tube in his arm and when he tried to get up, it fell out and a nurse rushed in. I don't think you can get out of bed just yet, she said, as she put him back in his bed and reinserted the tube. Jeff sat there with no vision, no idea what his surroundings were. Finally, after hours, he heard his mother. Honey, are you okay? She asked. That is the dumbest fucking question. I hate, I hate Margaret. Margaret, never. Name your child if she's a daughter. Definitely she's not a boy. Margaret. Terrible name so far. Uh, On the list with Derek, by the way. Yeah. Are you okay? You're laying there in a cast and tubes in your arms. It's fine. Did your brother make you do this? <laughs> it's all Seth's fault. She asked. Jeff couldn't answer, though. His face, <laughs> his face was covered, <laughs> and he was unable to speak. Oh, honey, I have great news. After all the witnesses told the police that Randy confessed of trying to attack you, they decided to let Seth go. Wait, Randy confessed? He's dead. He, he must have confessed before he died. Now he's dead. It's like, listen, you remember how we thought there were like, you said there were three psychopaths that like were at this area and like did all this shit? Well, now that we saw these psychopaths hop a fucking fence to a four-year-old's party with guns. And throw some Glocks around? No. No. They're like, maybe you guys were checking out. Lawsuit. Continue. Uh, all right. I have great news. Blah, blah, blah. Randy confessed. All right. Louis. No, I'm sorry. Randy confessed and- Mike. Adjust the mic. There you go. There you go. Is that so, better? Yeah, so you don't feel like you're an echo. <laughs> oh, okay. So, like, Randy confessed and Seth was let go. This made... Wait, so Randy's alive. He must have died. He died already. He must have died. Randy's alive. No, he must have died. He escaped. They used a Ouija board to be like, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Andy. Randy comes What's back. What's happening, on the Andy? Ouija board. Ra Randy, who killed you? Who who beat you up? Did Seth really beat you up? Seth did shit. Fuck Jeff. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't Seth. Let him go. He's out of Continue. Juvie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this made Jeff almost almost bolt up, stopping halfway, remembering the tube coming out of his arm. He'll be out by tomorrow, and then you two will be able to be together again. The fuck are they a gay couple? What does that couple? mean? Uh, they're brothers. Jeff's mother hugs him and says her goodbyes. Okay, bye. The next couple of weeks were those where Jeff was visited by his family. Then came the day where his bandages were removed. His family remembers. His, his family members were all there to see it. What he would look like. 
As the doctors unwrapped the bandages from Jeff's face, everyone was on edge of their seats. They waited until the last bandage holding the cover over his face was almost removed. Let's hope for the best, said the doctor. What the fuck? What doctor would say? What the fuck? <laughs> Let's hope for Let's the best. Be what doctor would say that at the last minute? You get a boob job. Let's hope for the best. Boop. Oh, damn. This worked out great. God damn. Oh, no. I was worried. You know, I'm the doctor here. Like, I, I listen, I'm as surprised as you are is how this went down. And who would gather? Who would be like, honey, hun honey, listen, I know this is a traumatic for you. I brought everyone you know and a camera crew for the big reveal. <laughs> I wanted this in real time. Also, your doctor's a piece of shit. He, he quickly pulls the cloth, letting the rest fall from Jeff's face. Jeff's mother screams at the sight of his... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Seth sorry, I'm and so Jeff's sorry. dad stare, awestruck. What? What happened to my face? Jeff said. He rushed out of bed and ran to the bathroom. He looked in the mirror and saw the calls of the distress. His face, it's, it's horrible. I just love no mother. I hope everyone watching this. And now we, we, have, a <laughs> we have a decent following. I'm not saying we're like Joe Rogan. But we, we have people that listen to this. <clears throat> if you are a mother, if you're a father, if something happens to your kid, do not stare them in the eyes and either scream in terror or be like, oh, oh God, like like you're gagging like, oh. and be like, everything's fine. Right. Guess no, what? None of that. That is damage done. They will need a psychiatrist. Pure and simple. And the fact is like, you gather everybody to see this kid, the bandages on the face, because you know two plus two equals four here. You know what's Oh, uh, like, yeah. It's going to be pretty scarful. And then this first, what was her name? Deborah? Her name's Margaret. Okay. Margaret is like, I'm going to gather everyone around. And the Margaret doctor sets this up like, shit, I hope this worked out. I wasn't there for this, apparently. Right, right. I'm just here for the show. Yeah, I hope this worked. Like, what the, What does that mean? You were there for the treatment, right? You didn't just throw a surgery? bag over his head. Was there surgery yeah, involved? You, you didn't throw a bag over his head and hope for the best. Oh, Lord. So there's that. But then the fact that the mother screams out like, oh, my God, you horrible, oh. ugly piece of shit. Oh, shit. Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. I'm so Jeff, Jeff, I'm sorry. Jeff, I'm sorry. Listen. I gagged a little bit there because you look so horrendous. Jeff, Jeff, stop crying. All right, come on, let me finish. Continue. All right, all right, all right. Uh, la, 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 la. <sighs> Seth goes, it's not that bad. Not that bad, said Jeff. It's perfect. His family was equally surprised. Jeff started laughing uncontrollably. His parents noticed that his left eye and hand were twitching. Um, Jeff, are you okay? Okay? I've never felt more happy. He starts laughing hysterically. His face was turned into a pure white color, and his hair singed from brown to black. His lips were burnt to a deep shade of red. He slowly put his hands to his face. It had a sort of leathery feel to it now. He looked at his family and looked back at the mirror. He just couldn't stop laughing. He stroked his face, feeling it once more. What caused this? Well, you may recall that when Jeff was fighting Randy, something in his mind, his sanity snapped. Now he was left as a crazy killing machine. That is, his parents didn't know. Doctor, said Jeff's mom, is my son all right, you know, in the head? Oh yes, this behavior is typical for patients that have taken very large amount of painkillers. If his behavior doesn't change in a few weeks, bring him back here, and we'll give him a psychological test. Oh, okay. Thank you, doctor. Pause. Pause. I'm sorry. So, 
there's so much let's pick this apart here guys i'm sorry i know this is supposed to be intense but doctor so my kids fought these people to the death one time and i didn't believe them doctor my I son killed before. another child is he fine doctor doctor my son killed a child and then got his face lit up like a fucking christmas tree is he okay is he doctor, okay doctor my other son i completely thought fucking did it even though he said like there's this debate like one said he did one said he didn't so i took the side of the serial killer child pricey the creepy child even though the other child didn't do it and i locked him away in juvie he's dead i messed up there is he okay do is he do okay? Do doctor Three fucking kids jump the fence on skateboards to a four-year-old's cap gun party oh, with yeah. guns, real guns and knives. Real guns. And all the parents in fancy suits stood around when this shit went down. And watched it all happen. In the backyard, then in the kitchen, then upstairs. But it's like, fine. Is he okay? Doctor, doctor, after he killed the first child that came back to life to tell us that everything was fine, apparently. Is he okay? Doctor, after he killed the child and then went upstairs to try to kill the other two child, is he okay? Doctor, after he tried to kill the other two child, then he had his face lit on fire. Is he okay? Who the fuck is this person? Margaret. There's Margaret. There's like Margaret. these situations here where it's like, is he Please, okay? Margaret. Ugh. The doctor. This is also the same doctor's like, I hope this worked out. Margaret's a psychopath. <laughs> Bring him back here. We'll give him my psychological test. Oh, thank you, doctor. Jeff mother went over to jeff jeff sweetie it's time to go jeff looks away from the mirror his face still formed into a crazy smile okay mama <laughs> his mother took him by the shoulder and took him to get his clothes This is what came in, said the lady at the desk. Jeff's mom looked down to see the black dress pants and white hoodie her son wore. Now they were clean and not full of blood. Stitched back together. Jeff's mother led... Stitched back together? They didn't get him clean clothes? Right. What the they didn't fuck even get him on? fresh clothes. His mom didn't even bother to bring him, like, new... It's like he was at jail or something. Because you know how you have to take the same clothes that you came yeah, in with? that's true. It's weird. Now they were clean... Jeff's mother led him to his room and made him put his clothes on. Then they left, not knowing that this was their final day of life. Later that night, Jeff's mother woke to a sound coming from the bathroom. It sounded as if someone was crying. She slowly walked over to see what it was. When she, saw, when she looked into the bathroom, she saw a horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile into his cheeks. Jeff, what are you doing? Asked his mother. Jeff looked over to his mother. I couldn't keep smiling, Mom. It hurt after a while. Now I can smile forever. Jeff's mother noticed his eyes, ringed in black. Jeff, your eyes! My, His eyes were seemingly never closing. I couldn't see my face. I got tired and my eyes started to close. I burned out the eyelids so I could forever see myself, my new face. Jeff's mother slowly started to back away, seeing that her son was going insane. No shit. About damn time, Margaret. What's wrong, Mom? Aren't I beautiful? Yes, son, she said. You are. Let me go get your dad so she, so he can see your face. She ran into the room and shook Jeff's dad from his sleep. Honey, get the gun. We... She stopped as she saw Jeff in the doorway. Get the gun? The knife. Like, really? What, Margaret? You're going to shoot your son down? Jeff, he done gone crazy. He <laughs> killed. He killed somebody, so we got to kill him now. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> Mommy, you lied. That's the last thing they hear as Jeff rushes them with the knife, gutting them both. His brother, Seth, woke up, startled by some noise. He didn't hear anything else, so he just thought his eye so he just shut his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. 
As he was on the border of slumber, he got the strangest feeling that someone was watching him. He looked up before Jeff's hand covered his mouth. He slowly raised the knife, ready to plunge it into Seth. Seth thrashed here and there, trying to escape Jeff's grasp. Grasp. Shh, said, said Jeff. Go to sleep. And that was the tale of Jeff the Killer. Ooh, um, it got creepier at the end. That was, um, it's Margaret. Margaret's the problem. She's like, throwing me off big time. I can't handle Margaret. The whole thing with Jeff, like the idea, like okay, is very much like the Joker mentality. Like yeah, yeah, and I totally got that. Like like as soon as the story like got to the point where he was like looking in the mirror and was like, oh, I'm smiling like a lot. I was like, oh, this is kind of jo Joker mentality where he snapped and he's like doing that stuff. Yeah. 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 And that made sense. And like the tingling he had in the earlier episodes, like that made sense. The problem was, honestly, the biggest thing was the mom. Like the, she acts so like sociopathish to her child. Right. It's she was so not motherly at all, removed. like in any way. And that's what really bothered me throughout the like she's story. Alien, like trying to yeah. do what she oh, thinks. Oh, okay, to. honey. Go get your clothes on. I sewed them back for you. Yeah. Like, oh, here's the clothes you almost lost your life in. Let me just make you wear them again and stitch them back up. You're doctor, freaking doctor, rich. Doctor, after everything that happened, doctor, after everything that happened, is he okay? Bitch, what do you think? <laughs> the doctor goes, He's fucked. <laughs> here's going, you know, like, like, oh, I sure hope this works out. That that is the greatest line ever. I want more people in I their need, professions. I need to see the exact line again. I like, sure hope this worked out. I want everybody in their profession right now, when there's a big meeting or whatever, before the meeting starts, there's nothing. look at people in the eyes and say, like, I sure hope this works out, and then just start it. The biggest PowerPoint presentation of your life on on the marketing <laughs> campaign for your company, look at look at the boss in the eye like, I hope this works out, and just start it. And he's like, wait, what? Start. Yeah. Yeah. What person would say that after a surgery or whatever it is? Oh, he goes, let's hope for the best. What does that mean? Let's hope for the what best. What does that mean, doctor? I hope they take this well. Whoomp. God. Wow. That was good, though. Like, I like. Uh, that was an interesting story. I, I laugh with love. The fact is, like. Whew. Sorry about that, guys. But <laughs> it talks Sleepy. about to me. I don't know that, that that darkness in people that like it needs to be pushed and it really like so in any individual every person that exists there's the ability to do evil i really think this there's there's the ability for an individual to, to do evil no matter who you are you have that ability i think but you have to be pushed or there has to be certain circumstances some people it's more prevalent and doesn't take very much hence why you have very bad people in the world they're they're not just predisposed to it. it it's already very much at the surface of who they are other people it's very deep within them and it takes a lot to get it out there but in this sense everyone's capable of doing bad things how do we know this there's this all you need to know there's this book called lord of the flies which basically states that like it happens anyway i'm rambling the point is the idea of him being pushed to the edge like this and, and slowly you see this stuff built away until he becomes who he is. That's that is creepy. Um, For a while, I thought that yeah. he was like starting to become possessed. Like, yeah, there was there was a possession in, within him and it was slowly like gaining control the of his body. Possession is his urges to kill. Yeah. And I really thought that it was going to end up being more of a supernatural type story. But in all reality, it was just he he broke, you know, like he went crazy. Yeah. And that's like, I don't know, like I heard this one thing on a Reddit when I was like Googling some, some stories. Do not look this up. But this is like the worst, the hardest thing to do is your first kill. What the hell? And anything you do. 100%. Why did you this. look this up? Figure this out because it's like for the horror stuff. What's wrong with you? The point is 
the idea is like there's that 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 moral barrier. Yes. That once it's broken, it's Pandora's box. Right. And you see this a lot in in the past with people that went to war. That once you had to oh, do that thing yeah. and you broke it past there, you as a human being really because your morality is, as a human being, right? They're right. For whatever religion you are, whatever your beliefs are, I believe for most people that are watching this, killing is bad. But do we all agree on that? You shouldn't kill people. Great. That's a genetic thing that's built into us. Like that's is wrong. When you break past that, what holds you back? And what was interesting about this story is that whole thing is like he was sort of okay until he went over that edge. And once you do that, and that's really scary. And I think that's why I believe serial killers are the biggest monsters. They're the real ones. Yeah. Like the idea of like a Jeff or somebody like that, or right. a Dahmer or a Ted Bundy. People that can do that thing. Yeah. That's creepy because that exists. And what makes them different? Because a lot of times Jeff has a facial thing. You can see Jeff. Jeff's soul is shown based on his outward looks. There are people out here that are creepy as hell that kill that look like us. Yeah. Like the one thing that I creeped out about Ted Bundy. I think you showed me like Zach, Zach Galifianakis like played Ted Bundy in the show. No, he didn't. Ted, um, Zach, it was Zach Galifianakis. No, it was Zach Efron. Zach Efron. It was a Zach. Not Galifianakis. That would be hilarious. That would be such a funny movie. Can we just take a moment and imagine <laughs> Zach Galifianakis as Ted Bundy for a minute in his little beard being like, I'm gay now. <laughs> I'm going to murder you. So, Zach Efron. I'm sorry. That's the whole different image. Let me re-aim. <laughs> I had that mixed up, but the idea of, like, he's very, like, normal looking. Right, right. But he was charming, and that's why everybody fell for him and was like, no, he couldn't possibly be a murderer. And then, and then he, he just had that flip switch. And that's the thing that's weird about this story, that, like, that darker urge, like, okay, people are like this. Like, the story might be 100%, like, there are, like, things you could tweak in it. You could edit some things for the script. But the core there of a person doing this stuff, it's like, yeah, because it's happened before. We've seen this shit before in human history. So that's what's creepy about it. Like, the thing that's creepy is not the horrible part of it. It's how they got there. That is more disturbing to me as a person. Is like, I'm not like, listen, I believe a kid snapping and killing people. That's fine. It's how you got there. That's disturbing right. because I accept as a human, we do this. Yeah. Kids do this stuff. Right. Like, um, and not to get too sidetracked, but like the whole thing... um. Um. Oh, who is uh, who is the co-ed killer? He was on Mindhunters. I don't remember their names. So um, really not Ted Bundy. Um, Ed Kemper. Oh. Kemper. Oh. But <laughs> Ed Kemper. Yeah. Ed Sheeran. But no, but Kemper. <laughs> yeah, Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> Sheeran. Before he did his greatest hit, he killed his family. But Kemper shot his his grandparents in the back of the head with a 22 just to see if he could and like that to me like that happened before yeah. the, but then he went he got he went to juvie and then got out because right. he, he got blah 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 right. point is, the point is that like that happened where it's like a kid did that just be like nah what happens so that's what makes the story scary to me is like that's not it's in within the realm of human like emotion for that to happen it's or it's happened before it happened you know, like it's like it's not like the first time like it's not a made-up story this is something like it's this. not so made very up where similar it's out of, to yeah. this has happened it's before. within the realm of possibility which right. is creepy right. one of the best horror movies ever made halloween the first one what happened a kid that was emotionally damaged mm -hmm. snapped and killed his babysitter yep. that's the premise yeah that could happen. Yeah. A kid could do that. And that's creepy because it's like it's it shows us. It, I think it just shows the flaws of us. And what's so funny is the biggest monsters out there are not the ones that we make, but are us ourselves as humans. We are the monsters. And I think that's so creepy when you think about that. Like we're the ones that go bump in the night. We create these mythological monsters to be afraid of. But deep down, what's the scariest thing? It's fucking us. Like, that's weird and messed up. That There's nothing more scary than a human because of our ability to rationalize in what we do. That's deep, Tom. You're welcome, everybody. That's really deep. Anyway. I think we should wrap it up tonight. Yeah, I think we should. 
So guys, this was episode uh nine. This is episode nine. Nine. That's what he tells me. It is nine of hopefully very, very many more. Yeah. My name is Thomas Aarons. I'm Carly Bird. This was Spirits and Ghost Stories. We'll see you everybody. Bye. Bye.